Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 43 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're learning how to think like an engineer using the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And then in this class, we will be using the Elite Explorer Kit. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but those of you who don't, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon, and you can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. Now, in the last few lessons, like the eight or nine lessons before last week, we had been working on sharpening our programming skills. <clears throat> we had learned about variables. We had learned about the difference between local and global variables. And then we had learned about how to modularize our code by creating functions and then even create functions with local variables. So we really have been improving our programming skills and now we have switched gears and we're starting to build our hardware skills. And so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to incorporate a new component into your projects. What's that component you might ask? The PIR motion sensor. Now, what does a PIR motion sensor do? Well, basically, it is an infrared sensor that senses infrared, that's heat, and then it, change, it senses changes in the infrared profile. So what will trigger the sensor? If it sees something that is warm and moving, it will trigger. If it sees something that is not warm and moving, then it is not warm, but it is moving, it won't, it won't trigger. If it sees something that is warm and not moving, I'm, am I repeating myself? If it's warm and not moving, it will not trigger. If it is not warm and moving, it will not trigger. It triggers when it sees something that is warm and moving. Now, why is that important? If you have something like a security camera, and you trigger it on motion based on the video signal, what is going to happen? Any little thing, like if you have a tree and the leaves are moving a little bit, it triggers, triggers, triggers. You get a lot of false alarms. The nice thing about the PIR sensor, it's got to be something warm and moving, which would be something like a person or an animal walking by. So you greatly reduce those false alarms by using a PIR sensor over using something like just detecting motion on a camera. Okay, so that's what it is. Is, let's see if we can get started here. I will get out of your way. <clears throat> I'll have a little sip of my coffee. And you might be asking, okay, what is the PIR sensor? What does it look like? Good news is there is one in your kit, and we will switch over to this view. And uh, what you can see here is it is the component on the lower tier of your kit, and you can see that it has like a hemisphere piece of plastic almost looks like a fly eye and that's because it really wants to act like a fly eye it wants to have a wild wide field of view so that out here on the periphery it could detect motion and not just detect motion something that is directly above it now the good news is this is an incredibly simple component to use it's easy to hook up it is easy to program and it is easy to incorporate into your Arduino projects. So let me show you how easy this thing is to hook up. This is the schematic. Now, when you hold the sensor with the pins towards you, the pin on the left is ground, the pin on the right is five volts, 
and then the pin in the middle is the sense pin. That's what you read from. So you can see in this schematic, I have the sense pin connected to pin two on the Arduino. Now, what you'll notice when you look at the bottom side of the PIR sensor, it has three male pins coming down. That means you need a wire that on one end is female to plug into that. You need three wires that are female on one end to plug into the sensor, but the other end of the wire needs to be male so that you can plug it into the Arduino board. Now, quite fortuitously, the kit does have this multi-cover, multi-colored band of uh, of connectors just like that, just like what you need. And you can come over, it pains me to have to strip these things off, but I do strip them off at the same time. So you'll grab three of them and you will pull three of them off together so that when you build your project, those three wires that you're doing, they stay together. And you can see then that we get a much cleaner and a much neater build if those wires are together. Now, I would have loved if this would have had on the end a red and a black <clears throat> and a white, but it had black, gray, and white, so I can't really use the, I can't really incorporate, you know, I like using the right color wire when I'm doing this. But what you can see is, is that on, or what you can't see, but I can just tell you is the left pin, when the pins are facing towards you, goes, and by towards you, what should I, I got to show you just to make sure. Okay, you see those three pins? Do you see those three pins coming out? The pin on the left, when you're looking at it like this, the pin on the left is ground, the pin in the middle is pin two, and the pin on the right is five volts. You can see I have gray, white, and black, and I have gray connected to ground, I have white connected to pin two, and then I have the, uh, I have the black, connected over here to five volts, okay? So that is very, very simple to hook up. And let me see if I can get it put back together over here. You see, I didn't want to touch it because I had it like perfectly neat. And that is pretty good there. But being OCD, it's never quite straight enough. So I sort of have two choices at this point. I could sit here for three and a half hours and get that thing perfect and lose all of my subscribers, or I could overcome my OCD and just say that's good enough. So I don't know if having things straight bothers most people, but I like to have things in a very organized fashion. So that looks good. We're going to call that good enough. And then at this point, we are ready to start coding. So I'm going to come over here to our code view, and I will need you to fire up a new fresh Arduino IDE and get your bare minimum open just like always and now we're going to start coding this thing up. The first thing is we need to set up that pin that we're reading, that pin 2. That's going to be an integer. I'm going to call it the PIR pin and that is equal to that is equal to that is equal to pin 2. All right. Now int our motion is going to be equal to zero. So motion is the variable where I save. Has it seen something move or is it not seen something move? <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and I'll initialize. I'll go ahead and initialize that to zero, just saying that when you turn it on, you haven't seen anything yet. Now in my void setup, I need to do my pin mode, which pin PIR pin. And what is PIR pin? It's an input like that. And then I'll put my semicolon. Then also we're going to print. So I'll say serial, <clears throat> serial dot begin. And I'll set it at 115, 200. And then I'll come here, put my semicolon. And whatever you set your baud rate to, whatever you set your baud rate to here, you just want to make sure that over here, right here, that it is set to the same thing. So you can see this is set to 115, 200. You can do whatever you want, but you just got to make sure that they are the same. Now I'm going to read to see if it is detecting motion. So motion is going to be very simply digital read uh -huh, of what PIR pin like that. Now, once I've read motion, <clears throat> what do I want to do? If 
motion equal equal high. How many of you guys have wasted like four hours because you made an if statement with just one equal sign? <clears throat> Uh, believe me, I have, and it's a hard error to find. We're going to open that clause, that if clause. It closes it for us, so I'll hit return, and then I'll just start coding here. What do I want to do if it sees motion? I'm going to do a serial dot print ln, and I am going to say in <clears throat> intruder alert. I think that warrants an exclamation point. Don't forget to put your quotes around that. Like that. Okay. And then I will put my semicolon. Then up next, <clears throat> what's the other case? If motion equal equal low, then what do I want to do? I want to open my clause. It closes it for me with close curly. I'm ready to code here. Serial <coughs> dot print ln, and then I'm going to say monit monitoring, and then I'm going to say all clear, all clear like that. Don't forget your quotes, <coughs> and then I will put my semicolon at the end of that. <coughs> now I must ask you. Could it really be that simple? Could it really be simple to use this really, really power-packed little component? I think it is. We're going to run it and see if we have any errors. <clears throat> okay, it's looking good, looking good. It is downloading. And boom, nothing. What did I do wrong? Motion, motion. Let's see, I don't like this new serial monitor. One thing <clears throat> that I do need to do in here, oh, I see what I did. This, I didn't close right, right? This one, I closed in the wrong place, so I need to take that out. Okay, and now I need to fix it. And, I, and this one, <clears throat> this closes the void loop, and now I need to put my other close here. All right. So open the first if statement. Open the first if statement here. Close the first if statement here. Open the second if statement here. <clears throat> close the second if statement here. All right. Then outside of that, I'm going to go ahead and put a delay of a hundred milliseconds a tenth of a second so it's not running quite so fast and a semicolon let's try this again i am sort of surprised that the thing didn't work though <clears throat> it didn't print so let's see if we can do better this time okay there it is monitoring all clear so it's not seeing any motion i will switch you over here to this view and you'll be watching the all clear and you will be watching the sensor down there. So if I come in like this, you can see intruder alert, all clear, intruder alert, all clear. And then even up here, let's see, there it is. It seems to really pick things up at the periphery better. Now let's see if I come in and if I hold my hand very still, you see my hand is warm, but it's not moving all clear. But then when I tr try to move my hand away, it, it catches me. So if I try to come in and get the pencil, it gets me. Okay. <clears throat> Every time it gets me. Okay. So if you try to steal the pencil, <clears throat> it catches you. So this is a quick little lesson. It's been a fun little lesson. And uh, there's one other thing that I should tell you that there's two potentiometers on the back here. Let me come to a better view here. There's two potentiometers on the back. One sets the delay, like how long does it say to stay triggered when it sees a trigger? And the other one is <clears throat> how sensitive it is. 
So if you only want to see things that are big and close, you would turn it one way. And if you wanted things that were more sensitive looking further away, like if you had it pointed across the room at the door, you would want to say it more sensitive. But I could not actually find which was which. So you would just have to you would just have to play with those things to figure out what was what. And there's a lot of different boards that incorporate the sensor. And so for the particular one that I have, I was unable to find the documentation that says what is what. But you guys could go in and play around with that if you wanted to play with the sensitivity and the timing of it a little bit. Would have been great on that component if they had like put it on the silk screen, which was which, and even better if they'd sort of indicated what direction, uh, what direction mattered. Okay, guys, this again has been a fun little lesson. And as always, I want to thank you guys that are standing with me on Patreon. Right now, I can stay in the game because of the support that I'm getting from Patreon. YouTube is not promoting these uh, in-depth types of things anymore. They're promoting shorts and sil silly little videos. And so the way that I can continue to bring you this good content week after week is you guys that are helping me at Patreon. So I want to give you a great big thank you for that. You can also help me by giving me a thumbs up on the video. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And when you do, make sure you ring that bell so you'll get notification when future lessons drop. And as always, and most importantly, share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will see you guys later.